Conventional navigational instruments used for tabletop navigation are fine during the preparation of your trip. However, once we move outside onto our chart case or laminated map, then the rigidity of the plotter and the undulations in the deck are not very effective for this type of instrument. And a pair of sharp dividers are not really something you want to have floating around on your spray deck. That's why I've devised the plotter, a flexible device, which will allow for the undulations of the deck. It will allow us to change from ordnance survey map onto chart. And we'll look in a minute on how we use the different scales and the various simple methods to uh, utilize the device. One of the problems with conventional instruments that paddlers may carry, mountaineering type compass or the Portland protractor, is the edge is too short to uh, take up an effective bearing. If we were going to paddle from the north end of Rum here, from this beach, up to the western side of Soe, then as we can see, it's very difficult to get an accurate bearing to take from the map. Here then, by using the plotter, we can align the edge of the uh, plotter on our beach from our start point to the western edge and by drawing a line we can take a simple bearing there. And we now place the centre of the compass rose on our start point, the beach on the northern end of Rum. We will use either the edge or the numerous grids that are on the device to align with the grid on the OS map. We now can read off on our line that we've initially drawn the compass bearing that we would actually use and add magnetic variation to. The second and most convenient way to uh, take the bearing, and this would be far more used when you're afloat, when you're bouncing up and down in your kayak, uh, is again to place the centre of the compass rose onto our start point, align the grid lines and the actual grid within the protractor take hold of the compass bearing string and place that in the direction that you wish to travel pointing to the western end of the island of Soe. We can now read off the bearing just close to on the compass rose and that will give us the bearing that we need. The device works equally as well on a nautical chart. Uh, we can place the centre of the device over the compass rose over our beach. We can align it with the latitude and the longitude scale of the chart and we can then take the string and place that in our direction of travel to the western end of the Isle of Soe. We then read off the bearing where the string crosses the degrees on the compass rows. Once we've taken our bearing we can then measure the distance. We can use that by using the scale along the side here and measuring off from the edge of the island down to the beach, which is approximately six nautical miles. The other way to do it, very quickly and efficiently, is to use the measuring string. By placing the string at the start of the beach, we can measure up to the edge of the western side of Soe, and then go to the side and measure off our distance on the scale on the chart. It's just as simple on an ordnance survey map. Again, we could use the nautical scale to measure our distance from the end to the beach and as we can see six nautical miles. If we want to remain in kilometres we can turn round use the other scale and here we can see it's approximately 11 kilometres. Or conversely we could use the string again measure the distance and here we can just measure it against any other kilometre grid that we've got running along our OS map. For speed, the top edge of the protractor is six kilometers long, which is approximately one hour's paddling or three nautical miles. We can measure off very quickly six kilometers, turn the protractor over, and that would tell us it would probably take us about an hour and three quarters to paddle that distance. The advantage of the string is it allows us to measure an indented coastline. So let's say we've arrived at the point and now decide we want to paddle into Soe Bay, we can place the string on the edge of the coastline, work our way along into the telephone box at the head of the little bay and measure off 
just over seven kilometers. If we were to give the grid reference for the western end of the Isle of Soe, we would need to work out what grid square that point sits in. We can see 40 here, 41, and it's in grid square 42, the easting. We then need to work our way north, and as we can see here, 10, 11, 12, 13, it's in grid square 14. We now need to break down our four-figure grid reference into a six-figure grid reference. We place the edge of the Roma onto the western end of the Isle of Soe. We now read back to 404142 and we can see the number six on the Roma scale. So our grid reference here will be 426. We now work our way upwards and we have 14 and again we can see the six. So it would be 146. So our grid reference for the western end of Soe would be 426146. So the advantage of the device is it works fine on your kitchen table, but it also works fine on the deck of your kayak. The scales work well on your OS map or on your chart. And at the end of the day, its flexibility makes a great repair patch uh, with a bit of gaffer tape, just in case you'd got that navigation wrong and hit the rock in the first place. <laughs>